Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site, BettingAngle.us, a free site. Today is June the 30th, 2024. Let's talk about a great fight. It's in my favorites folder right now, right? Uh, both guys distinguish themselves. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, Teofimo Lopez versus Steve Claggett. Uh, the only thing I don't like about this fight is the fact that I lost on both sides of the play. Right? This fight blew up on me. Before I go further, let me tell you my pre-fight prediction, which I gave to premium subscribers. Um, I went for the fences. I grabbed the plus 498 on Steve Claggett simply to win. And I hedged that with Teofimo Lopez by stoppage at a minus 129. Right? My logic was simply there is no way that this fight goes to distance. Right? A knockout by either, and I would have been very good. Well, the fight went the distance. It's a little shocking that it did, because, of course, Teofimo landed a career-high 282 power shots out of the 619 that he threw. In other words, folks, this fight is a shootout. Right? Somehow, uh, and both guys came, they were ready, uh, Teofimo in the post-fight interview said, look, this was a matter of will. Um, both guys came with their Ray games. I disagree with the scoring. Teofimo certainly wins the fight, but I thought Claggett wins at least three rounds. Importantly for viewers here, the fight's in my favorites folder right now. So I encourage you to look at it. This is one of the better fights style-wise. Chris Algieri encapsulated it early when he said the way to beat a counterpuncher, which is who Teofimo is, is to overwhelm him with volume. Right, folks? Claggett comes in. He's prepared to be on his front foot. He's prepared to crash the pocket. That's his game. Not only that, this is the front foot guy who remembers to throw shots to your body. It's very hard for a counterpuncher to deal with volume, especially when you don't know where the volume's going to be. And Claggett is two-handed. So what does Teofimo Lopez do? And keep in mind, this is the Teofimo who beats Lomachenko by being on his front foot. So what does Teofimo do? Folks, it's a jaw dropper. The first round is a must watch. Teofimo's on his back foot. And folks, he's masterful. Let me point out too, we talk about a mobile jab and stuff like that in other videos. This is the guy who can literally, while backing up, stop, pivot, and throw uppercuts. Teofimo throws uppercuts with both hands in this fight, and he's accurate. And understand, he's doing so in the middle of a rainstorm. It's not like the guy in front of him is inactive. No, Claggett, who, of course, is one of the very few to land 500 punches in a 10-round fight. In other words, this is high volume by high volume boxing standards. Claggett is active. Claggett is in front of Teofimo, smothering him. And in the middle of that rainstorm, Teofimo is throwing every punch imaginable. Let me go one step further. There were a couple of things that really stood out to me. Right, as Claggett is coming inside to crowd Teofimo, Teofimo starts to use his body. In addition to punches, but he starts to use his body to create spacing. So in this fight, and it's really off the chain, you're going to see Teofimo bend at the waist 
and make sure his upper body is leaning over the pocket, creating distance between himself and Claggett. Folks, it's <laughs> you're watching the fight. I think Teofimo is wrong. In the post-fight interview, Teofimo says, this fight was more will over skill. Teofimo must not know how skilled he is in the pocket. Right? While Teofimo has a problem with southpaws who move away from him, Sander Martin, uh, an inverted Jermaine Ortiz. If you come at Teofimo in the pocket, you're facing one of the best in the sport in the pocket. Let me also say this. You know, uh, Ali against Foreman, the rope dope fight, where Ali's over by the ropes. By the way, that's the same fight Ali fought against Ron Lyle, for example, right? Um, the Foreman fight's legendary because, of course, Foreman was the heavyweight champ. Foreman was unbeaten going into that fight. Uh, both Ali and Foreman had won Olympic gold medals, right? But understand, Ali, in several fights, loved to hang out over by the ropes. He was a master at it. You might recall Floyd Mayweather against Marcus Maidana, right? Mayweather's hanging out by the ropes. This is an older Mayweather, conserving his energy. While Maidana is heavy puncher pursuing him, Right here you have another master with his back up against the ropes. Right, Teofimo is up against the ropes, against an extremely high volume Steve Claggett. A guy who's not going to be easily discouraged. A guy who gets hit with uppercuts and then is immediately back in the pocket. A guy who's landing his own share of right hands, right? And again, I would challenge the scoring in this fight. Right, you look at the scoring, you think this fight is completely lopsided. Folks, it's not close to being lopsided. Claggett is landing shots. And I say that with all due respect to Mark Kriegel, who after four rounds had Teofimo up four rounds to none. Right, but just understand, you have an active Claggett who backs Teofimo up against the ropes. And then you realize Teofimo is a master up against the ropes. That the guy who actually is doing what he wants isn't Claggett who is backed up Teofimo. It's Teofimo who is cherry picking shots, including shots to the body on a front foot heavy opponent. Right, this is one of Teofimo Lopez's best fights. Let me also point out, too, that Teofimo makes some mistakes. As Kriegel points out in his analysis after the first four rounds, Teofimo was ignoring his jab early. Right, Teofimo doesn't discover his jab, if you could believe this, <laughs> until the middle of fight. Right? Doesn't discover his jab until the middle of the fight. I'm just telling you that Teofimo has so much going on that he still looks brilliant in the first four rounds. The first round really is eye-catching to see how Teofimo immediately concedes the pocket. There's no ego here. All you have is a technician who is thinking, how can I be effective? This guy's going to be on his front foot. How can I land shots while backing up? And understand, Teofimo is one of those rare fighters who has the skills to do so. Right? So, look, I lost on this fight. I lost it all on this fight. Right? What can you say? Um... I was looking at the action. It was exactly as I thought it was going to be in terms of being pitched. In other words, there's no five-second period in this fight where the guys just look at each other. No, they're always engaging, right? Claggett's either pursuing Teofimo or Teofimo is, you know, pivoting and coming up with his own shots. Neither guy is bashful here. 
Think about it. 282 power shots landed by Teofimo Lopez means that in every round, he's landing at least 20 power shots. Think about that. At least 20 power shots. Now, there wasn't the knockout I hoped for. What can you do? Some days, it's going to go against you. But admire the mastery. This is one of Teofimo's best fights. Let me also say this too. Promoters need to look at Steve Claggett. Many opponents, many, would not be able to handle his aggression and his volume. He just happened to be in the ring with one of the few elite fighters who could. Right, let's get back to Chris Algieri's statement. The way to beat a counterpuncher is to overwhelm him with volume. Folks, I'm telling you, Steve Claggett tried. Great effort by both guys. I think both guys distinguished themselves. If I'm a promoter, Steve Claggett's on my short list of guys to test an opponent, right? Because it's not just volume, it's foot speed. It's an ability to get even a Teofimo Lopez up on the ropes. It's the courage to pursue a Teofimo Lopez. Understand, Teofimo already dissected Josh Taylor from inside the pocket. Right? We all knew going into this fight that Teofimo is expre extremely skilled inside the pocket. Right? I mentioned it on the pre-fight video. Steve Claggett is so confident in his style, which is front foot volume heavy, that it didn't dissuade him from entering the pocket against Teofimo. Right? This is, in my opinion, one of the better fight films out there. Right? Excellent performance by both guys. Teofimo was just too much of a sharpshooter. Once he it discovered his jab in the middle of the fight, he then started to pull away later. Right? But the first four rounds, to me, are about as good as they get. Excellent fight. I encourage people to look at it. Let me point out, too. And this needs to be said about Teofimo. He now wants to move to 147. Right? He's also calling out Isaac Cruz. That's an intriguing fight. But Teofimo wants to move to 147. I know he hasn't gotten a lot of KOs at 140. Right? In part because he fought a couple of movers. Right? Sander Martin, Jermaine Ortiz... They're hard to catch up with as it is. Right? But understand, Floyd Mayweather was able to thrive in his career in part because bigger men saw him as the smaller guy and did not understand that they did not have the boxing skills to bully him. So what you had were a series of guys who tried to walk down Floyd Mayweather. I know it sounds ridiculous now, but they tried to walk down Floyd Mayweather. Diego Corrales comes to mind. And what was really going on was Mayweather had these fighters exactly where he wanted them, right in front of him. If Teofimo jumps to 147, and if the response from the guys at 147 is to try to walk down Teofimo, folks, his opponents are going to have problems. This is a guy with skills that can carry weight classes. Right? All you have to do is look at Teofimo with his back up against the ropes, dealing with the level of volume that Steve Claggett is throwing at him and just the mental strain that Claggett is challenging him with. In other words, Claggett gets hit with shots, he's right back in the pocket. Understand, many fighters would try to match Claggett in terms of volume, which would be a mistake. You'd be playing into Claggett's hands. And what you're going to see is Teofimo using his body 
to create spacing. Teofimo able to throw body shots on a guy who is in his face with Valia. Teofimo willing to bend down and throw uppercuts with the ability to throw uppercuts with both hands and to lead with uppercuts. This is an elite boxer in the pocket. I believe his skills would translate at 147 pounds against bigger, aggressive opponents. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this video. I still think, <laughs> you know, sour grapes by me. I still think there should have been a knockout in this fight. Right? Lord knows there was action. Right? I didn't get it. I lost on both halves of the play. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.